You wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Grab your glasses, grab your phone, it's time to hit the city. No wait, that's not right. That's not your story. That's Kesha's story. And we're here to tell yours. Your story about how you got started in Star Citizen. But what is your story? You wake up in a dark room, foggy from the night before. Who are you? Where are you? You hit F12 on your boba glass to turn off the comms feed to your visor. Your head pounds as you look around, almost like someone is moving a mouse that's controlling where you look. You open your Moby glass by hitting the F1 button on it. Hmm, you only have 2,000 credits for AUEC. Must have been a really good or a really bad night. You check the tabs on your Moby glass. You look at the comms chatter. It's just the usual people trolling. You then switch over to your local fleet inventory. It looks like your trusty Aurora MR is here. It's not fancy, but it does get you from A to B. You look at Knickknack. It looks like the only place you have stuff stored is here on Arcor. You then check your galaxy map and see the green marker showing that you are on Arcor. Then Mo Trader. Well, you can't afford to send any money to anyone. So you don't need this right now. You then look at the contracts and wonder if you can't freelance to earn more credits. While looking at the vehicle maintenance page, your journal, and then finally reputation. Hmm, that's weird. It looks like no one even knows you exist. You're gonna need to fix that. You get out of bed, pressing W to will yourself up. Looking out into the darkness, you run, almost falling to hit the light switch. You hold in an F while clicking that switch. That's better. Now you can see. This looks like the standard blue collar apartment you're used to. Still stumbling around, you scroll down the speed and realize you should just walk to the bathroom. You look into the mirror, your head pounding. You aren't even able to process what you look like. A menu screen flashes. What? That was weird. Then you see your base form appear. Faces like memories scroll through your mind. Then you can see the shape of your face begin to focus in the mirror. Slowly, as if someone was dragging sliders, adjusting and blending your proportions, it all starts to come into focus. Your features, your face, the one thing no one can take from you in this universe. And that's you. But how did you end up in Arcorp, of all places? Stanton has multiple planets you can call home. Some of them are better than others. Some of them are just not great for a new spacefarer. Horison, on Crusader, is the home of Crusader Industries. It's a gas giant. Its floating metropolis is great to visit, but not a great place to be from. Its thick atmosphere can take up to 20 minutes to exit in bigger ships, making spacefaring frustratingly prohibitive to most new adventurers. Lorville on Hurston could have been a good home. Its proximity to bunker security missions and space bounties are appealing. However, it's the oldest city in Stanton, and it can be a little confusing to navigate. Area 18 on Arcor is where you're starting this journey. Its thinner atmosphere makes space travel quick and efficient, and since the city is on a completely urbanized planet, it's easy to navigate where you want to go. While not perfect, it is where you are calling home, but it's not the last city you could have chose. The last city, New Babbage on Microtech, could have been a great location to start. In fact, it was your second choice. Bounty hunting, mining, trade, security missions, it's all there. The major drawback is it's the furthest from anything else in the system. Maybe you'll move here eventually, but you don't want to live there now. And so you settled on Arcorp. Now it's time to go out and make a name for yourself. It's time to leave your apartment and try to figure out what happened. As you leave your apartment, you decide to look out and enjoy the suburban jungle that is Area 18. All of Arcorp is built up urban sprawl like this, but in its own way, 
It is beautiful. When you push the button on the elevator, you shudder thinking of all the tragic accidents these things have caused. All the lives cut short. Glitchy software. While riding the elevator to the lobby, you check your local inventory by pressing I. Eh, nothing in there that you need right now. You take in some of the cityscape scenery as you leave your apartment building. You need to go catch a train. You stop and look at the hospital. Last night couldn't have been too bad. You didn't wake up in there. <laughs> at least you didn't die. The nicest thing about Area 18 is the only train that runs from the central city hub is the one to the spaceport, unlike other cities where you can easily get on the wrong train and lose a lot of time. While riding the train, you think to yourself, what would be the best way to start earning a living? You had a rough night and don't really have any gear to do bunker missions, plus you're on hardcore, so that's out. The Aurora, while being an okay light fighter, isn't really made for that. It looks like you need to do some delivery missions. What the locals call box missions. Yeah, being a courier isn't glamorous, but it is easy and necessary. You walk up to the fleet manager terminal and select your ship, clicking the retrieve icon next to the one you want to fly. You only have one ship, but if you had more, you could pick which one you wanted. The console thinks for a minute, then once your vehicle is pulled out of storage, it flashes up telling you what hangar to go to. On your way to the hangar, you pick up a drink and a lucky burrito for the trip. You shudder, thinking that you have to ride another death trap elevator, but you enter and select Hangar 3 like the terminal said when you retrieved your ship. And there she is, your first ship your ticket off this planet. You hold shift to sprint towards the ship in your excitement. Then, holding F at the door, you enter your ship. While definitely tiny, this ship does have room to stretch and to lay down, meaning you can camp out in space, catch a few Zs without being held to a station or a planet. This is freedom. You enter the pilot seat and press U to power up all of your ship's systems. While holding F, you scroll in to get a closer look at the multifunction displays in your cockpit. You click a menu to see some of the different screens you can set. Everything seems to be okay the way it's already set up, though. Looking at the comms panel, you click the radio icon next to the control tower entry to let them know you're ready to take off. You hear the acknowledgement and the gears in the hangar door above you opening up. As the hangar bay doors open, you realize that you forgot to pack your lucky burrito. It gets lonely in space, you can't forget that, so you quickly jump out of your pilot seat by unbuckling with the Y key. You open your local inventory with the I key and drag your burrito and a drink into your ship's inventory. You are now ready for takeoff, so you get back into your pilot seat.
Ready for takeoff, you activate your lower thrusters with the space bar. You know, to go to space. You begin lifting off, and soon find yourself clearing the hangar doors. And with a farewell from the control tower, you pull back on the mouse pointed the nose of your ship up, switch to drone view using the F4 key, and give your ship some gas using the W key. Once you're underway, you press N to retract your landing gear. When you clear atmosphere, you hit B to start your quantum drive. Then start searching for a nearby waypoint to get you all the way into space. Once you find it, you hold B and get pushed back into your seat as you rapidly accelerate like an ancient F1 driver coming out of a corner. Once you're settled from your first jump, you head to the nearest space station, Bajini Point, because you know most jobs and mission broadcasts are easier to pick up from there. Now that you're near the station, you open your Moby Glass and navigate to the contract manager. It's now filled with distress calls and bounty hunting missions, you flip through them. But you know to prepare for all of that, you need to do a few delivery missions. So you accept the Kovalex evaluation. You accidentally close your Moby Glass before plotting a course to pick up your package. So you tap F2 on the Moby Glass, which takes you directly to the system map. You then double click on R Corp to see it and its moons displayed. You see a yellow white box on Walla. That's where your mission is. You double click it to zoom in, then highlight your mission destination and click set route. A heavy blue triangle appears on your HUD. That shows where your route is taking you. A lighter broken square indicates your objective. When you have a route set, the only quantum point that will appear is your target. Line up and let's go. As you approach your target, it's nighttime and it's really dark, so you hit the tab key regularly to get an idea of the terrain from your sensors. You also turn on your headlights by pressing L. As anemic as they may be, they will help you when you get closer to the ground. As you get closer to the ground, you lower your landing gear by pressing N and switch to drone view to get a better idea of where you're landing. Engines off. Now that you're landed at the designated area for your pickup, you get out of your seat and leave the ship. This moon has no atmosphere, so make sure you're dressed appropriately. Or don't, I'm not your mom, I'm just the narrator. Outposts and stations on moons like this have airlocks as you would expect. After opening the outer doors, you need to stop and cycle the pressure inside the lock. Once this is done, the inner doors will automatically open for you. Now inside the structure, you follow the marker on your HUD to find your package. You hold F and select grab to pick it up. Does that say biohazard on the side of it? Who are you working for? 
you take the package and exit the station and get loaded cargo and self into your ship. It's time to go deliver this. You don't want it any longer than you need to have it. After taking your seat in your ship, you pull up the star map and set a course for your delivery point, and then take off. Since you didn't land on a pad, there's no need to ask permission to take off. You just go. While in flight, you get up and stretch your legs some. You take a look at the biohazard box. You're not comfortable with having that so close to you. <laughs> it may already be time to look into getting a bigger ship, if you're going to keep working for these people. You grab your package and exit your ship. Once you're inside, you find the delivery terminal. You select drop off, and once the door opens, you gently place the package into the terminal. Because you're not a savage parcel worker that punts their cargo from a mile away. Like seriously, DHL? I said place it by the side door, not chuck it over the fence like a savage. Luckily my shipper knows what they're doing, and packed accordingly. <clears throat> I mean, you complete the mission, get paid, and explore some loot boxes in the station. These are places to get food and sustenance stockpiles, and occasionally bits of armor. Once you're done taking supplies, which you will inevitably forget to take off the planet from the local inventory, you head back to your ship and set a course for Bungini Point to get some well-deserved rest. But before leaving the slow atmospheric moon, you can't resist the urge to take one fast flight across the surface, low and observing the beautiful terrain in all its glory. Once in range of the station, a red warning pops up telling you to get landing clearance. You click on your comms panel and click on Genie Point to request to docking in a blue circle with an arrow that appears, overlaying your landing spot. After landing, you look in your inventory and realize, as predicted, you forgot to load everything you just needed from the moon into your ship's inventory. Guess you'll have to go back and get it sometime. Not today. Once you leave the landing bay, you use the, the fleet ASAP manager to store your ship. System. That way you can start preparing to end your day. You have one last thing to do today you need to change your regeneration point to this station so that you don't keep respawning on the planet if something tragic happens. And that's it. You survived your first few hours of Star Citizen. You're now ready to take on the world, or the universe. Please like and subscribe. I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful. If so, let me know in the comments. If not, let me know in the comments as well. What can I do better? Video editing is kind of a new hobby for me. And while this video may seem kind of simple, it took me 15 hours just to learn the tools to do it. And the tricks I learned give me hope for an ever increasing quality of my future videos and a hope that I'll be able to publish them quicker. Thank you for watching and good game America.